Hey everyone, welcome into Hog Hype, a special basketball season opening edition. Tyler Cass joined by Jackson Collier of Hog Beat, the Arkansas Rivals website. Jackson, we'll just start with the hype of it all. I mean, when was the last time you think an Arkansas fan base was this excited about a basketball season? Man, it's really hard to say. I don't know if I've ever seen this much hype surrounding, at least in my lifetime. You know, I was born in 1996, and so I don't really know what the hype was like personally with the championship teams and everything like that, or the championship team in 94. Um, closest, I would say, would maybe be one of the Mike Anderson era teams that had Bobby Portis or Michael Qualls, uh, Kai Madden, maybe that 2014, 2015 team. Other than that, I really don't think there's been a ton of hype, uh, at least not this level of hype, if you're uh, not including the Muscleman era that's already happened. And I think the, the real question, though, is it justified? I mean, it's a brand new team, but those brand new pieces are, are pretty big. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things I think you can definitely justify the hype here. You got five-star Nick Smith, five-star Anthony Black, five-star Jordan Walsh, and they're all coming together with some experienced trans transfers. You have uh, Trevin Brazil, you got um, Jalen Graham, the Mitchell Twins, um, a lot of really solid pieces. Ricky Council as well. So when you look at the recruiting ranking, it's seven, second ranked recruiting class in the country. Um, you have one of the top transfer classes in the country and they're all blending all this talent together. And then on top of that, you have Devo Davis, Kamani Johnson coming back, two pretty solid contributors from last year's run. Um, definitely, I think the hype is justified. The, the amount of talent is something I don't think has been seen in Fayetteville for quite some time. Um, on top of that, you have the best coach that's been in Fayetteville in my lifetime. Um, I was four or five years old when Nolan uh, left. So um, other than Nolan, you know, Muss is kind of it for Arkansas basketball. You take all those factors together and, you know, the, there's no way that you can't be excited about this Razorback season. We haven't really gotten, excuse me, <clears throat> we haven't really gotten a chance to see this team against too big a competition. I mean, obviously the biggest exhibition game against Texas wasn't on TV, so unless you were in Austin, you get to see it. W what do we know about this team? I mean, are they going to struggle out the gate? Should we expect them to come out hot? So probably a little bit of struggle just because you have 11 new pieces and you also have six freshmen. Uh, so there's there's going to be a little bit of struggle and we've seen that the past two years one of those uh justin smith went down with an injury kind of kind of struggled there a little bit then last year again you know trying to find the right lineup muscleman eventually decided you know what would my dad do went bigger and that's kind of what changed last season so this season i don't know if there's going to be a massive change uh, that's going to lead to um, a better season or a better finish to the season, but I do think they're going to struggle out the gate. And I think all that really uh, needs to happen is they need time to grow. Um, you know, Nick Smith, Anthony Black, Jordan Walsh, they're going to be three freshmen that get a lot of playing time. They're going to be playing against some tough opponents. They're going to Maui, they face Louisville, and then one of Texas Tech or Creighton, and then the rest of the field is loaded with who they could possibly play. So they'll, they'll have some good tests early, um, but as far as what to look out for, you know, shooting might be an issue out early, uh, turnovers, uh, maybe some defensive issues, lulls and knowing assignments and stuff like that, but um, that'll all get better. It's all still a work in progress, and I think um, it's, it's only going to develop throughout the year. We know from past experience that Eric Musselman doesn't exactly like to use the deepest of benches. I mean, he sticks to maybe seven, maybe eight guys what, who he trusts. With as much talent as on that roster, do we still expect that? Should we see more guys than we'd be used to from a Musselman rotation? So I think what this year is going to kind of hold is you're, I think you're going to have some guys that are used situationally. Um, you know, Joseph Pinion has proven that he can knock down shots and he played really good defense um, in the exhibition that we got to see against Rogers State. Um, Musselman thought he looked good in the red-white game and stuff like that too. So I think you're going to have Pinion come in situationally. You know, if they need someone who can knock down a shot, if they're struggling to shoot, I think he comes in and he's not someone that you – um, you know, sacrifice a lot on the defensive end with as well as he's been playing. I think you also have 
potentially a front court by committee approach. No one has really established themselves as the starting five. So you have Jalen Graham, you have Makai and, and Mikel Mitchell, and uh, Trevin Brazil is most likely going to play at the four spot. You have Kamani Johnson still battling at that five spot too. So I think if no one really establishes themselves at that starting five spot or someone who can play that spot pretty consistently, I think more often than not, you're going to see a, a committee approach where you know you'll play a guy five or ten minutes, sub him out, get him a breather, let him go hard five ten minutes, and crash the boards, play physical, and see what happens. Um, I think that might change a little bit. So it's kind of a long-winded way of saying probably stick to the six to seven, maybe eight key guys, and then from there, you know, plug in a few pieces uh, situationally and rotationally. We know they're going to see some big name teams in Maui, but back here on you know the contiguous United States, are there any non-conference games that maybe you have circled as potential games that could trip them up? So Baylor is going to be a really intense matchup. It's going to be in Waco, um, but it's going to be at the latter part of the year in the middle of conference play as part of the SEC Big 12 Challenge. That's going to present a pretty big challenge to this Razorback team because Baylor's a really good team, have a really good coach and Scott Drew. Um, I think it's really going to benefit Arkansas having a full non-conference and then start of conference play before that matchup. So I think we'll see a more developed, more complete Razorback team by that time, but still think it's going to be a very difficult matchup. All right. Obviously, the NCAA tournament, who knows? We've seen great teams go out and lose in the first weekend. We've seen teams we thought were mediocre make a run all the way to the Final Four. But before that, SEC play, everyone's pretty much got them picked second behind Kentucky. Do you think that's a fair assessment for this team? Do you think they have a chance to win the conference? Do you think that might be a little too high on them? When you look at just talent, I think that's definitely a fair assessment. And you look at what Musselman has done already with less talented rosters. Um, you know, he's finished second and third um, his previous two years, or maybe one of them was fourth. I can't remember the exact numbers, but he's been close to the, to the top of the conference with, with lesser talented rosters. So I think just by adding so much talent, uh, that's, that in and of itself is justified. Now, you have to take into account, hopefully they develop uh, like Musselman thinks they will, and like the fans think they will. Um, but as far as, you know, actual players on the roster, I, I don't think that that's out of the question at all. 